Today we're going to be integrating sine of x to the power of n between 0 and infinity. And we're going to do this using Ramanujan's master theorem. Now before we get there, first we're going to do a substitution. We're going to say u equals x to the power of n, du equals n times x to the power of n minus 1 dx. Now our integral is going to become 1 over n on the outside. Our bounds of integration will remain the same. And here we can just write x to the power of 1 minus n times sine of u du. To finish our substitution off, we're going to want to write x to the power of 1 minus n in terms of u. So we can say x to the 1 is the same as u to the power of 1 over n. See so that x to the minus n is just e to the power of minus 1. So if we multiply those together, integral between 0 and infinity, u to the power of 1 over n minus 1 times sine of u du. This doesn't really look like an n. There you go. 1 over n minus 1 times sine of u du. Okay, now here is where we're going to use Ramanujan's master theorem. So what is Ramanujan's master theorem? Let's consider the following integral. 0 and infinity as our bounds, x to the power of s minus 1 times f of x dx. And this is called the Mellin transform of f of x. So let's say f of x can be written as the following in infinite series from k equals 0 to infinity of minus x to the power of k over k factorial times phi of k, which is just, you know, some function of k, as long as it's continuous and well-defined this will work. Then the Mellin transform of f of x is going to be gamma of s times phi of minus s. So how are we going to use this with our integral above? Well firstly, you could spot that if we have s as 1 over n, then we can plug that in. And if we have f of x as sine x, then we can plug that in as well. So really what we want to find is this function phi of k such that we can get our answer phi of minus s or phi of minus 1 over n. So let's think about this. What we want to do is we want to write sine x in this series above, right? We want to write sine x in this form and f basically find what phi of k has to be such that f of x is sine x. Now we know what the Taylor series of sine x is. k equals 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power of k times x to the 2k plus 1 over 2k plus 1 factorial. So if we're actually to write these series up, this series out, we can say that 0 plus x plus 0 minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus 0 plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial, and so on. The reason why I wrote these zeros in is because the ones that have this function phi of k such that for every even term, it's going to be 0, but for every odd term, it's going to alternate between 1 and minus 1. Let's write this a little more clearly with what we want. We can write a little table. So we have k here, phi of k here. So when k equals 0, we want phi of k to be 0 as well. Now, when k equals 1, what do we want? Well, we can clearly see that what we want is our coefficient of x to be 1. And if we look up at f of x, when k equals 1, we have minus 1. So that means we want phi of k to be minus 1 when k equals 1. Now when k equals 2, we have the same thing. It's an even term, so we want that to be 0. And now, when k equals 3, in our Taylor series, we want minus 1 over 3 factorial as our coefficient. And we can see up in the f of x definition, we already have 3 factorial on the bottom for when k equals 3. So really what we want is just for phi of k to be 1. And you'd know that this, this pattern is just going to repeat for, you know, k equals 4, 5, etc. If we go back to our, our definition of phi of k to be some continuous well-defined function, there's only really one function that this would work for. And you can kind of see where this is going. Phi of k has to be sine of minus pi over 2 times k. And if you plug in these values of k, you can see that phi of k is what we want. So that means we can say that sine x equals the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of minus x to the power of k over k factorial. And then phi of k is going to be sine of minus pi over 2 times k. 
So this is basically what we wanted. So if we write our original integral down, 1 over n times the integral between 0 and infinity, I'll just, I'll just write x instead of u this time. So x to the power of 1 over n minus 1 times sine of x. We can now use Ramanujan's master theorem and say that this is 1 over n, and this is going to be gamma of s, and here s is 1 over n, so gamma of 1 over n, and now phi of minus s is we're basically just going to plug in k equals minus 1 over n into here. So we just get sine of pi over 2 n. And that's it. That's our integral done, just like that, using Ramanujan's master theorem.